Video games are chock full of waifus these days. Every genre, every series it seems, has no shortage of awesome female characters. Hard to believe there once was a time where this wasn't the case. But when I was coming up in the 90s, strong female characters of this type were few and far between. So when Chun-Li made her debut in the 1991 Street Fighter 2, the stage was perfectly set for her to lightning kick her way into our hearts and minds. Yeah, you heard me right, 1991. And she's been dominating the scene ever since, become one of the most iconic and beloved characters of video game history. She's been in damn near every installation and adaptation of Street Fighter and is as synonymous with the franchise as Ryu and Ken. But what is it that makes her so iconic? I mean, it's gotta be more than the thighs, right? I mean, I definitely think so. So strap in, lace up your white combat boots, and join me as we dive into this week's midweek waifu and take a look at why Chun-Li is still kicking all of the ass 30 years after her debut. Extremely proficient in Kung Fu, she is well known for her varied and beautiful kicks more than her punches. Like Ryu, she is also able to utilize her spiritual energy in battle. She tirelessly continues her investigation to take down the criminal organization Shadowloo, while her strong sense of duty and obligation are readily apparent. She also longs to live the lifestyle of an ordinary girl. A simple but solid background for the first lady of fighting games. Let's talk about this visual design for a second. She has her custom cut chi pao and her hair bun ties, very distinctly Chinese in that way. It really goes a long way in showing her culture without being too much. They could have easily had her be a walking offensive stereotype, but she really pulls off the look. Throw in those signature white boots and some spiked bracelets and you've got a kick-ass design. So kick-ass that it really hasn't changed much over the years. I mean, the Street Fighter Alpha series gave her her sort of casual exercise outfit and recent games have given her a ton of fun alternate costumes but her default look has stayed consistent, and for good reason. It's hard to improve on perfection. Speaking of perfection, we have got to talk about them thighs. You know I was gonna get to them at some point. In a world stacked to the brim with female characters full of fun bags aplenty, Chun-Li is here to remind us that the bottom half needs some love too. And those thighs really are legendary world-renowned for their muscular thickness, stopping power, and just overall lusciousness. Y'all can keep Zangief, but she can crush my head like Sparrow's egg any day with them thighs. But there's gotta be more to her than just her looks to make her such a great character. Well, like Starfire, who I covered on last week's episode, Chun-Li is a great example of a character with duality. She's a fierce fighter who won't hesitate to hand you your own smoldering asshole but she also has the most adorable win expression of all time. On one hand, she's a justice-driven Interpol agent with a no-nonsense attitude on the battlefield, tracking the would-be world dominator M. Bison who murdered her father. But she's also light-hearted and playful with her friends outside of combat. <laughs> There's something to be said about characters who can show complexity. I think it just makes him feel more real. And especially considering she's a fighting game character, I mean, no one really expects them to be complex anyway. Capcom really didn't have to make her this likable or endearing, but they did. I mean, just look at this face. Is there any reason why the strongest woman in the world would be making this face? Capcom just did it because they just wanted to have her be adorable at the same time. And for going that extra mile, they've been reaping the rewards for decades. She actually has a character art too, believe it or not. She's not just some perfect Mary Sue who just ticks off every perfect little box. As I mentioned earlier, her primary motivation in most of the storylines of the games is to bring M. Bison to justice following the murder of her father at his hand. And while she can usually be a very rational person, all bets are off when Bison's in the picture. She will throw caution to the wind and pursue that evil bastard with reckless abandon. It's gotten her and her friends in the hot water many times, and it's almost gotten her killed. No one's perfect, and it's often the character's flaws that endear us to them. Now to this day, Chun-Li is going to be my go-to in any game she's in, but her impact on culture in general has been apparent in her adaptations outside of the world of button mashing. By far, 
My favorite non-video game version is from the anime movie from the 90s. Watching this as a kid pretty much cemented Chun-Li as my favorite Street Fighter character, and it's not just because of the shower scene. Although I'm not going to say it hurt her chances or anything, I mean, come on now. This version really does summarize Chun-Li in a very fundamental way. She's still justice driven, still has that no-nonsense attitude in a fight, but even with all this, she still has her lighthearted and playful side. She even goes on to form a close friendship with Guile after a somewhat tense meeting, one that spawned that infamous face I showed earlier. And if this had been the start of a movie series, I would have loved to see them become even closer. Seriously, that hospital scene at the end is just way too adorable. Unfortunately, Guile's the only other Street Fighter character that she really has a connection with. At least a positive one. She only has one real fight in the movie too. Her showdown with Vega in her apartment. I mean, come on now. You got one of the most popular characters of the franchise in your movie, and you only give them one fight scene? What the hell? Why are you gonna just stiff us on the Chun-Li action? Well, at least they made it a good fight. Better than good. It's one of the best fights in the whole movie. She may not be on par with Ryu and M. Bison in terms of strength, but don't get it twisted. I mean, look, she chucked a couch at this dude like it was a folded chair. And that's not to say he made it easy for her. I mean, after she jacks his face up good, Vega turns it up to 11 and goes in for the kill. But even when her back's against the wall and she's about to pass out, probably from all the freaking blood loss, she doesn't give up. She digs deep for one last barrage and displays the best version of her signature lightning kick that we've ever seen outside of the video games, and sends Vega to hell as only she could. Chun-Li would also play a secondary role in the Street Fighter Alpha movie years later, once again working as an Interpol agent. This time, however, she works alongside Ryu, Ken, Sakura, all those guys. Now this movie isn't nearly as iconic as the 90s anime movie, but it has its moments. And it's the first time, to my knowledge, that she wears her Street Fighter Alpha gear outside the video games. And while we're talking about movies, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention her role in the live-action Street Fighter movie from 1994. Played here by Ming-Na Wen, now she's a reporter working with Balrog and a Hawaiian E-Honda? Um, okay. Okay! Okay, 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 okay. 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 Unnecessary changes aside, Ming Nod does a great job with the material she has, and they are at least consistent with the whole quest for vengeance thing. She even gets to fight M. Bison herself. And she gave the late great Raul Julia the lead up to his ever quotable, for me, it was Tuesday line, when she confronted Bison about her father's murder. I did put a bit more information in here than with my last one, and that's honestly because while I love Starfire, I don't think she's nearly as popular or as well known as Chun-Li, and she definitely hasn't been featured in as many things, so there are a few more bases to cover. And this is me leaving some stuff out. I haven't even touched on all the different directions that her story goes into with the Street Fighter 3, but that would require me to go into the weirdness that is the Street Fighter timeline, and I don't know if I want to go into that. <laughs> But thank y'all for joining me for this episode. What's your favorite thing about Chun-Li? Is it her visual design? Her moveset? Do you have a favorite game she's in? A favorite non-game that she's in? The best comment will get pinned, and I'll read it on the next episode. But until then, thank y'all for watching and listening. I'm Animane, and I'll talk to y'all later. Deuces.